They need to be set free. They need to be born again. Y'all gonna pray with me? Our churches today, many of them are going down because we in our churches, you see, we have our stated form of service. We, 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 we have this program or that program. We go through this form or that form. We have this ritual or that ritual. We do this or we do that. But nobody is being saved. Nobody is being delivered. Nobody is being set free. Nobody is being born again. You ever pray with me? In our nation today. But you can't fool God. Because he sees everything. If only we got right with God, church, and pray, our world, our nation, our homes, and our lives, our land, would and could be healed. It would and could be saved. It would and could be changed. Because prayer will change the Bible says that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land there's power in prayer. Jesus Christ was and is our example in prayer. You see, before we decide on any course of action in our lives, no matter what you decide to do, no matter what you are about to do, no matter what you're thinking about doing, before you decide on any course of action in our lives, we should look to Jesus in prayer. Because he is our example. You see, Jesus prayed from the cradle to the grave. Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in prayer in the beginning of his ministry after he was baptized by John in the river Jordan.
into my hands. I commit my spirit. Prayer changes things, y'all. Children of God, if Jesus, who was perfect, if he needed to pray, if Jesus, who had all power, heaven and earth in his hands, if he needed to pray, how much more do we weak sinners need to get down on our knees and pray? No prayer, no power. Much prayer, much power, because there's power in prayer. Well, y'all ain't gonna pray with me this morning. Bro. We get away, brother. Huh? And oh yeah, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. Every time we have revival in the church, we have prayer week leading up to the revival. We pray and we ask for a good revival. It takes me back to the day of Pentecost when well, well, the disciples, they, they prayed for 10 days. Uh -huh. And then the power of the Holy Ghost fell on us. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that 3,000 souls were saved that very same day. There's power uh -huh. in prayer. Uh -huh. Sometimes I hear people say, you know, we don't have revival like we used to. We don't have church like we used to have. We don't know what they say. They always got something negative to say. No matter what you do, there's always something negative. And I just stop by and tell you that the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. Y'all hear me? Ask and ye shall receive. Thank you. We must pray, my brothers and sisters, because prayer will change things. Because somebody, as I remember, they, they prayed for me. See, they had me on their mind. They, they took the time and they prayed for me. But you know what? I'm so glad as most of us I'm so glad that they prayed. I'm so glad that they took the time and prayed for me. The Bible says and tells us that if I regard iniquity in my heart, listen to this now, the Lord will not hear me. Let me say it again. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Should I just stop by my way to glory and tell you my mission? That our prayers go no higher than our own heads. If sin lurks and lives in our hearts, y'all are with me. You see what we must do is we must humble ourselves. That's one of the hardest things for church folks to do. 